Hey, how's it going? This is Luke Stokes. It's, uh, let's see, Thursday, May 30th. And this is gonna be one long hot take on trying to show you a couple cool things that Blocks.io can do. So for example, the, well, I guess the main things we're gonna go through is uh, how to change your active key using Scatter and Blocks.io, how to configure an EOS account for multi-signature permissions using Blocks.io, and then how to propose, approve, and execute a multi-signature transaction using Blocks.io. So quite a bit we're gonna go through. Uh, for the first part, I wanna show here is an account. And you'll notice uh, this has the same owner and active key. So all the Genesis accounts that, that came from the original launch of the EOS mainnet have the same setup. And often, as, as is the case here, when you use an application like EOS Links and they generate an account for you, just for simplicity's sake, often they just create one key for both owner and active. But this isn't the best way to manage your EOS security because you prefer to have your owner key completely offline and uh, you know secured, and then the active key, the one you use on a regular basis. So for example, if you had a bunch of funds staked in your EOS account and you notice somebody unstaked it, so all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, somebody hacked my account. Well, then you could go ahead and change your active key if you had a different owner key and it wouldn't be an issue. So what we're gonna go, what we're gonna try to do here is um, log in with Scatter and we're gonna go ahead and change the active key on this account so that the owner and active key will be two separate keys. Uh, sometimes it takes a little while to log in here, so we'll give it a second. And we're gonna log in with EOS Links test. And if I go to my wallet now, and under here, you've got this change permissions. So you can go ahead and plug in a new active and owner key here. Now, you'll have to go ahead and generate key pairs. I use uh, Anchor, which, or, which is brand new beta, which is a tool I use quite a bit. So I can go in here under tools, I can hit key generator, and I can go ahead and generate a key, which I'm gonna do, and I will pause the video while I do that, of course. All right, we're back, and as you can see, I've generated a new public key. I'm gonna go ahead and change permissions here. And this is the uh, the key that I got from Anchor again. I'm just gonna wait for uh, Scatter to pop up here. And once we do this, you'll actually, and this again, nicely Scatter tells us, this is a very dangerous transaction. So obviously you wanna be very, very careful with any kind of update auth situation. We're gonna go ahead and allow it because we're reviewing it here and it looks all good. This is setting it as we want it. So we go ahead and allow that and there we go. Now, importantly, I'll have to go into my scatter and re-import this active key account because the account I have now would be considered the owner key. So once again, I'm gonna pause and go ahead and do that real quick. Be back in just a second. All right, so I've re-imported my new active key into scatter for that account, so I should be all set. And what I wanna demonstrate next is, let's go ahead and actually double check that. Log in here, take a look at our account. And we should see now that we have two different keys, which is perfect. So now we're working with the active key. So that's the first part of what we wanted to do. Got that done. Next, we want to configure an account for multi-signature permissions. So I'm going to go ahead and use a different account here. And so essentially what we're going to do, we're going to add to the active permission this idea of being able to have accounts manage the permission. So right here you see there's just normal keys, like a normal account. But if I come in here under my wallet and I go in through the permission manager, we see we have a pretty advanced permission manager here in Blocks. I know they did a great job putting this together. So I'm going to go down to active. And normally you need a threshold of one, which you get from your key in order to process the transaction. So we're gonna change that and say, you know what, we want a threshold of two. And we're gonna keep this key in here for now and give it a threshold of two. So this, this account could still do uh, transactions with its own key. If you were doing a pure multi-sig account, you'd wanna remove that and just have the accounts on here. And then we're gonna, what we're gonna do next here is add the accounts that we wanna give multi-signature permission to be able to, uh, I think it's Lula, is that right? Luke Links EOS. I always get that confused. Which one were we just on? Always important to get 
the right one. Loops length test, yes. Definitely important to get the right account in here. Okay, and that's also gonna be active. And then we go ahead and save this permission. Let's double check it. So what this is gonna say is, for these two accounts to process a multi-signature transaction on behalf of the, Luke, the two Luke Stokes 2 account, they both get a weight of one. So one of them alone can't do it. Both of them need to do it in order to reach this threshold of two. So we'll go ahead and save that permission. And again, Scatter is going to warn us that this is a, uh, you know, a dangerous transaction, of course, because we're we're actually modifying the uh, authorizations for this account. And here we go. So we go. Just double check it. Seems right. And now, when we go and we look at this account, what we'll start to see is something a little more interesting. So now we have, in order to process transactions for this account. You need a threshold of two, which you can get from either this private key or you can get from both of these accounts approving a multi-sig. So now this is the fun part. And we're going to go in here and switch this to multi-sig mode, and we're going to do a transfer. So we're going to go ahead and transfer some tokens. And because we're in multi-sig mode, when we actually click on this, it takes us right to the proposed multi-sig transaction page. So here we just come up with the name you know, MSIG test. Uh, we're going to put in the requested approvals. And we know from our previous screen we want to have this account and this account. So essentially we want both of those to approve this transfer. Now this is a little bit tricky for the authorization here. The actual transfer itself has to be authorized by the account that wants to do the transfer. So that's this account here. So that's what we put in there. So this is gonna say from to this amount, all good. So we go ahead and propose that. Just uh, waiting for scatter here. And there we go. So now we've got the requested permissions of these two accounts. Here's the details. And also you could, if you want, you could actually expand the details and change like uh, the expiration. This is set to expire in about a day. If you wanted to, you know, have it last longer, you could. So now we can go to check proposals on MCGAGO. Here it is. And so these are the two accounts that are waiting to approve this. You can also go in here, which is pretty cool, under all multi-sigs. So you can see all the different multi-signature uh, transactions going on right here, which is uh, which is pretty neat. So there's ours right there, MSIG test. All right, so next, what we're going to do here is we're going to log out. We're going to log back in with one of these accounts, and we're going to approve it. Now, this is really important. I got tripped up by this. Go ahead and turn off multi-sig mode. If you don't, when you go to approve this, it will actually create another multi-sig to do the approval. So we're going to go ahead and approve this now. All right, if we refresh this page, we'll see there's that's approved. Go ahead and log out. Log back in again as the other account. And again, this could be hopefully done on multiple devices. That would be ideal. Instead of it all being done in Scatter for increased security, you'd obviously have you know your phone or you know, some other device or even you know another human being doing these approvals. And there we go. We'll go ahead and refresh this page again. And now we see it's approved. Now this is the cool part. Now that it has all the proper permissions, anybody can execute it. So I, even though I'm not Luke's, two Luke Stokes two, you know who has who is what this transfer is all about, I can actually execute it. And let's double check it. So two Luke Stokes two is trying to transfer to one Luke Stokes one point one EOS. I can go ahead and just execute that because it already has the the required approvals. And once that happens, I can then go ahead. Take a look at that transaction, looks like it executed. And if I go in here and I look for that account, we'll see right here, there's the transfer. It worked. So that is an example, pretty cool example of how you can do multi-signature transactions right from Blocks.io using scatter tools. Uh, you could also use Anchor. You could use a lot of really cool uh, tools to do this. The more and more we all use multi-sig, I think the more and more we're going to have a secure environment where theft becomes near impossible 
And I just, I wanted to do this quick video to demonstrate how this, this stuff isn't super complicated. Like anybody can figure it out. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna demonstrate one more thing as well. You can also come in here and go to the main EOSIO contract, for example, and you can run any of these as multi-signature, as long as you go here and turn multi-sig mode on. Not only that, if you wanted to, for example, uh, like a EOSDAC custodian, I think it is, or uh, oh, actually, like any of the, the methods for any contracts that you work with, these can also. So like, let's say you wanted to update the terms or you want to register as a member, all of these things can actually be done as multi-sig transactions if you have this multi-sig mode on. So there's, there's really no limitations on you know, what you can do with multi-sig. Any, any action on the chain can be multi-sig and any account can be figured to be a, a multi-sig account. So I hope this was useful to you. I know multi-sig transactions are a little bit you know, scary and confusing to a lot of people, but I think once we get that education out there and once the tooling updates, so the mobile apps and all the other wallets support it, I think, uh, I think this is gonna become really important for our community. So um, I'm really excited about this. I hope you are as well. I think every single contract, every single token contract, every single block producer especially, uh, these should all be multi-sig permissioned accounts. Uh, it's really, really important is to improve the security of the system. I hope you agree and I hope you start taking advantage of these awesome features we have. Thanks a lot and take care.